Howdy, howdy. Welcome on in to the pre-show before the free show. I've seen him in concert, too. Kyle Park, I have as well. He's excellent. He is he's fantastic. One of, he's one of our favorites. Hi. Um, yeah, no, I've Hi, seen sorry. him. Hi, sorry. There's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a TV <laughs> on the other side of the studio, and Pickles usually play music in there, and it's a it's a smorgasbord of different styles and stuff. Really, You can really get a feel for how she's feeling when yeah. you walk into the <laughs> studio. Today was, it was, today was Country Thursday. Yeah. And um, I would even say close to Red Dirt. Thursday. Yeah, yes. Uh, Red Dirt Thursday. And uh, yeah, that's the th I think that's the third artist that's rolled up that I'm like, I've seen him in yeah. concert. Uh, Kyle Park was real big around the Central Texas area of doing like the little amphitheater shows or going to like a legitimate park and doing shows out there. So mm -hmm. I've probably seen him a collective three or four times. Yeah, Kyle Park's he was great. big. He's big player in like small town yeah, concert. He's, you he's, know, he's good people. I will say he's and he's a guy who is the right amount of famous. Yes. In that. Like, He'll take a picture with you. Yes. But he's also like big enough that like if you're walking in the store and you see him, you're like, Oh my god, you're Kyle Park. Yeah, he's like <laughs> touring enough and he's like, you know, he's 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 a headliner. Yes. You know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. a headliner, but he's not so big that he's like, Oh, excuse me. I have to yeah, he's not selling out right. AT and T Stadium, right, right. but he could probably but, sell out Dickie's arena, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. Um yeah, he could certainly play the big Thursday or Friday night show at Billy Bob's. Yes, you know yes, what I mean. There you go. That's that's, a, that's, that's the a level that line. we're looking for. Like because Randy Rogers Band was on there earlier, and uh -huh. it's like I've seen Randy Rogers Band. They could definitely sell at Dickies. Yeah. Um, AT T's. That's a different animal. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. That's, that's like the George yeah. or the Tim yeah. McGraw they're, they're, or the, would, whoever's yeah. coming. I, I don't know. Uh, I w I feel like Randy Rogers Band is probably a little bit bigger than Kyle, bigger Park. Than Kyle Park. Yeah, I would agree. No, but anyway, anyway, all that's to say, pickle. <laughs> yes. Something on my mind. Okay. And. I'm tired of the debate. Oh, I'm God. tired of the. <clears throat> I'm tired of the speculation. Okay. I'm tired of p 
people assuming they know what I think. Okay? <laughs> I'm not on Twitter to defend myself, but I'm sick of it. Okay. So I'm putting it to bed right now. I'm putting all the rumors and all the rumblings to bed right now. Pickle, my top five preschool classroom jobs. Okay? Oh, We're putting geez. it to bed. Here we go. Number five. This you should say, not be a debate. Can you say number five? Number five. Thank you. Teacher's helper. Now, teacher's helper is a real... There's five positions in a preschool? Oh, there's like 30 positions oh in a preschool. Because Hank comes home and tells me every day. Teacher's helper is a real nebulous one. And that's the problem. That's both the, the, the value and the problem. The, uh -huh. good, the good news is you're next to the big lady or the big man, right? You are, you are, the, you are the ace, you like helper. And, mm -hmm. But you never know what that's going to mean. You could be super busy. You could be super bored. Mm -hmm. But teacher's helper is a powerful position. And so I think it deserves a spot in the top five. Okay. Number four. Number four. Custodian. Mm -hmm. So trash helper. Mm -hmm. And again, I think this is about setting the tone. <clears throat> is this like custodian as in... We're talking about them helping clean up like throughout the day, Correct. not like the people that come in and Correct. like not scrub Mr. the toilets not after Mr. night. Not Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo is the actual custodian. Okay. I'm okay. talking about so this Hank is... gets to be custodian on a Thursday. Okay. So this is wannabe yes. Mr. Leo. And and you, one thing that oh, I Oh, these think... are kids. Okay. I was so confused. Sorry. Continue. I said preschool classroom jobs. What didn't you understand about that? I thought you were talking about adults. That's why I was like, there's five of them? thought they're all the teachers custodian is a very powerful position okay and i think it de turn de it depends on how you set the tone the first time you're the custodian because it's it's one of those things that there's times where it's really it's really busy snack time right snack time you're going to be busy yeah but also if you set the tone that you don't mess with this with with Hank, not, the custodian yeah then they'll do the work for you this is true right so you just it have to be a on, dictator it's a it's a matter of respect okay it's a matter of earning the respect of your peers you need to have your glare down too <clears throat> like if you see little johnny going to drop something you you need to whip that over there number 3 number 3 and this is controversial <laughs> oh gosh caboose <laughs> i think being the caboose <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I think being the caboose is l the most underrated, most low-key, powerful position on the on the org chart. Okay. Okay. The teacher obviously trusts you enough that you're not gonna just fall behind. That you're on that you're on the back because you've got free reign. You could just stop. Yeah. You guys are heading to the cafeteria. You could you absolutely could just, like, just dip out. You could absolutely dip. Yeah. Hundred percent. You can absolutely dip, but. The teacher trusts you. And okay. you have a lot of responsibility uh, to the people in front of you of saying, hey, keep this, keep this line straight. We're mm -hmm. going. We are going to the playground. We are not going anywhere else. I feel like I'm the caboose of this operation. I think the caboose is, is the critical, really critical to the whole operation. Number two. Number two. Door holder. <laughs> oh, no. You think door holder is better than caboose? You have the keys to the kingdom. You can't go anywhere without you. Mm, yeah. You you are arguably the most important person in that room at that time. What's the teacher going to do? Come and hold the door herself? No. You are in charge. And furthermore, mm -hmm. maybe you're a wide door guy. Maybe you're, oh, we're all going to squeeze. Depends See, on how I don't you're, feel like that one should be too. Oh, I think door holder. You, you're no. holding the keys to the kingdom. Because you, then you have to go in after the caboose. So that's why being the caboose is great. You get to leisure, and then you get to watch someone no. else do all the work, and no. then they have to run up around you. But you can operate without a caboose. You cannot operate without a door holder. Someone has to be the caboose, technically. Someone will be the last person in line. I mean, if now we're getting into the semantics of it. And yes. I don't want to... This isn't a semantic argument. This Does is the a, door holder have to run back through <laughs> after everyone and get like back in line? Yeah. So there's a lot of responsibility here. That's too you much got free hustle. Rate. Right, but I'm saying the hustle pays off because mm. you get to hold the door. I don't think that's fun. I'm going to disagree. Okay. Number one! Number one. I think you know what this is. I, I guarantee you I do not. Line leader. Oh, yeah. Line leader is, you're the alpha. Yeah, Okay. that's true. Pickle, mm -hmm. some, people, some people are afraid to be the best. That's fair. Okay? Not the line leader. That's not a job for the faint of heart. That's true. You are 
head of the table. You are the chief. And and when you're the line leader, you're in charge. <laughs> so, Trisha Pickle is in the comments. She would appreciate this. And before you ever even said what your number one was, she said number one is going to be line leader, just saying. Yep. She's exactly right. She knows. She's exactly right. And you know what? You know what? All due respect, Pickle. You mm -hmm. know I have a lot of respect for you. Yeah. She has a lot more experience in this world than you do. Oh, 110%. And, and so, I'm okay with that. And so I value I actually her, prefer it to be that her way. Her validation mm -hmm. of my list, that is all I need to hear. That's fair. Because, yeah, the thought of being an elementary school teacher, I, I just want to cry. Like, I... There's no way I could not do I've that said, job. So I could not. I would. I would much rather be a high school teacher and deal with those kids than I don't. I don't have the patience to deal with elementary my, kids. I don't. We got to get going because we have a guest here. That's but true. Very quick. I admire people that do. My, uh, as you know, my wife is an elementary school teacher. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so is my mother. Told her a million times she could absolutely find a way to do my job. Yeah, she could. One hundred and ten. She could figure it out. It may not be elegant. It mm -hmm. may be uh, tough, but she could figure out how to do my mm -hmm. job. Zero percent chance I could do her job. I could not. Could not agree more. Yeah, she could figure it out. They're built different. Anyway, top five preschool classroom jobs. <laughs> Hit the DMX button. Pickle. Did the error sound? Yes, yes, yo! From the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Mothership here in beautiful Louisville, Texas, it is Texas Football Today, the door holder of internet shows. Yeah. My name's Greg Tepper. I'm the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas Football a Magazine, texasfootball.com, a corresponding website. Thank you for spending part of your day with us, whether you're watching us live on texasfootball.com, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, or on some sort of illegal pirated stream. Also that. Uh, I just hope it shows up in the numbers. <laughs> or you listen to us on the podcast, which you can subscribe to on the podcast vendor of your choice. Either way, thank you for doing your part to support your local mediocre internet show. I'm sitting here, sitting over there at the helm today, making us sound good. She is the Duchess of Dorks. She is Ashley Pickle. Hello, uh, Ashley. Hello. As, as my son says. <laughs> That's uh, every single toddler. It says Ashley. Ashley. You have three syllables. Three syllables. They name. can't get two. But he. He That's also where Shley comes from a little bit. Yeah. Like, it's one or two. <laughs> he knows your last name, though. I do That's love that. Darn sure. Ashley Pickle? <laughs> Today is Thursday, May 5th, 2022. It's Cinco de Mayo. It is. Uh, 203 days till Thanksgiving. Happy birthday to Adele. And today we'll play America's favorite game. Is Adele older or younger than Greg Tepper? Mm, younger. Correct. By about a year. Yeah. Uh, well, I just assume that you're older than everyone, so... <laughs> I, hope you guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed the final edition of is are they older than <laughs> Greg Tepper episode 1381 on today's show folks in just a moment we're going to be joined by an inductee into the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame who will be joining the ranks uh, of the legends in Waco uh, live on Texan Live on Saturday, Tony Brackens, former Fairfield Eagle, former Texas Longhorn, former Jacksonville Jaguar, will join us on the phone in just a moment. In the back half of the show, it's Helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. So if you've got questions about high school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel, all of the things, you can go to uh, the comments on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch and let us know. We will answer as many as we can. It's Helpful Honda Mailbag Thursday. I'm sorry, Helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. On a Thursday, because we don't have a show tomorrow, because we have to go to Waco to set up for the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony coming up this Saturday. So, uh, get your questions in high school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel, uh, preschool, classroom jobs, all of those things. First, Miss Pickle, do we have first four through the door? We sure do. It was Nick Morton, Aaron Arbuckle, Rob Hadaway, and Tony Blaylock. Welcome in, fellas. Welcome in, my friends. No time to waste, Pickle. Let's go to the hotline, and let's bring in... The one of the members of the class of 2022 in the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame, uh, a Fairfield Eagle, a Texas Longhorn, a Jacksonville Jaguar. We are joined by Tony Brackens. Tony, how are you, sir? Good morning, sir. Fantastic. 
I, I, I first want to ask you about Saturday. Saturday, you'll go into the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame, um, joining a, an illustrious class uh, there in that kind of hall of legends. Uh, you certainly deserving for your time there at, at Fairfield. Um I'm I'm interested when you got the call that you were going to to be a part of this Texas High School Football Hall of Fame induction class. What was what was your initial reaction? Uh, I was in shock. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, you know, just you know, when you play sports just for the love of the game, I was a what I really wasn't a stat chaser or just trying to pad stats or trying to do anything other than just go out and play the game. And then when you get rewarded, I mean, you think like when people get awards and accolades that they were like the the people that really padded stats and really, you know, went out and, and dominated just all across. So I never really uh, envisioned myself as one of those kind of people. I just uh, just played the game. Well, you played so it was, yeah, yeah, was kind of like, wow. You played it pretty well. Uh, obviously, there at, at Fairfield, things went pretty well for you. I'm, 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 I'm curious. You know, you've you've had this this illustrious career in the college in the college ranks and in the pros. Uh, but when you look back on your high school career, uh, what are what are the lasting memories that you take uh, from from being a Fairfield Eagle, from for playing f for those teams, and for for you know, uh, really starting your career uh, off in the way that you did? Uh, just. Uh, just competing, just being uh, the Lord allowed me to compete, and and just the camaraderie and and the value every guy on the on the team, not just you know the people that we thought we needed, but the people that was on the team. We just just the everybody was equal. It wasn't like you know we did we didn't treat people any different. I wasn't treated any different. I was. It was so it was just that whole atmosphere was we played all sports together. We was going to go from football to basketball to running track. You know, it was just like a more of a family brotherhood uh, situation. So, I mean, that's, you know, from the coaches to the teachers, you know, you didn't want to get in trouble in class because. Mm -hmm. If the teachers told the coaches, it was a trickle down. It was like just, <laughs> just the whole, just the whole atmosphere deal, just the whole, all of it. And and that that brings up an interesting point. You know, you you look at some of the, some of the folks you're going in uh, to to the Hall of Fame alongside. You know, Rodney Allison from from Odessa, right, and and uh, you know, Shea Walker from Port Arthur Jefferson. Those are big schools. Right. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. That's that's my whole point. You know, we didn't win no state champion. You know, you think when people get you know, Super Bowl champions, people, you know, get into different, you know, Hall of Fame careers or, you know, you get into the Hall because you won two or three state championships, you know, just stuff like that. That's what I, that's what I'm referring to. Sure. And we were just, you know, district champs a couple of times, you know, went to the playoffs, you know, it was like, well, well so you don't really, really think of yourself as, you know, a Hall of Famer when it comes to you know, just looking at how the team fared, I guess. Well, but <clears throat> at the same time, I mean, you were obviously doing something right out there. Uh, and and, and uh, I am curious because, you know, there there's some folks who are going in the Hall of Fame from big schools. You Nobody would ever mistake Fairfield for a big town. Um, uh, do, you, do you feel like your career would have played out differently if you were at uh, if you were at a, a, a bigger school, or do you, do you feel like playing at a, a, a town, playing in a town like Fairfield, helped to shape you into the into the player that you were? Yes, sir. I believe that um, just the whole um, humbling uh, family atmosphere kept me grounded and and rooted to where um, I didn't have to compromise uh, anything to try to. I didn't have to step on anybody to get up a ladder or compromise anything to try to better myself it was just we 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 all played together we we were unselfish we were all humble we all just just did what, because we enjoyed each other not just because i'm looking out for self or i'm trying to do something and everybody else is not uh or looking at this guy because he's making our team bad so i i'm, I'm not going to be able to get a scholarship because you're not helping it wasn't situations like that i didn't need aau mm -hmm. i didn't you know it, it was just 
being able to be a family and, and the humbling um, allowed me to be prepared for the real world, the humbling part of how the world is. So I, I, I really think that that actually helped me and not hindered me. Talking with Tony Brackens, uh, future Texas High School Football Hall of Fame inductee here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation at hashtag TF Today. Tony, it was from Fairfield to Austin that you went where you were a three-time All-Southwest Conference defensive end and an All-American defensive end there in 1995. Um, I, I'm holding in my hands the 19, we are Dave Campbell's Texas football after all. We have the 1994 edition of Dave Campbell's Texas football here. And down here in the bottom right, uh, it says UT's Tony Brackens leads wave of Southwest Conference super sophomores. Uh, but you're the smaller picture. Uh, Shea Morenz is the bigger picture. Do you feel like you should have been the bigger picture in the, on the 1994 cover edition of Dave Campbell or uh, cover of Dave Campbell's Texas football? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the trap. The trick question. Um, when, I, 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 I thought I just answered those. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when you were... Um, when you were there at Texas, uh, you know, w- over the course of, of those those three se- or th- those seasons that you played there, the three time All Southwest Conference uh, selection, what is your what's your lasting memory from your time playing with the with the Longhorns? Uh, pretty much the same. It was just the, you know, not not knowing that I could even play at that level, uh, just going in, and you see all these blue chip. Um, five, you know, just all these guys that are great. And then you get to just, I was just in awe to be amongst them because coming from, you know, like I said, the small town, you know, you get out there and it's like, wow, this guy, I heard of him. You know, this guy, he, I seen him in a magazine. I seen him, he signed on TV, you know, <laughs> it was like that kind of stuff. So just the whole humbling uh, atmosphere. And then once you get into a situation where you, uh, are able to contribute and play, and then those guys start uh, allowing you to be on the same level with them, and then they start uh, embracing you as a teammate, and then it then it just went up from there, and then we were all just happy for one another and everything we did. The whole uh, 1993 class, I mean, we just, I mean, it was several guys that went on the, uh, play at the next level from that class and the upperclassmen just the whole atmosphere of it was was just, just it was just a dream uh and and finally you know we're we're looking forward to seeing you saturday there in waco for the texas high school football hall of fame induction ceremony but but it's worth mentioning that there's an argument that you're not even the, the best athlete in your own home um, I want to ask you about being a, a dad to some star basketball players uh, there at Fairfield. Uh, I know you're a competitor, and I know that uh, you're you're a guy who obviously has achieved a lot. Uh, what's it like for you to watch your daughters go out there and uh, and and ball out out there for for the Eagles, uh, who they've been so spectacular for uh, the uh, the Lady Eagles basketball team? Well, it's it's awesome. Um... They might not like it as much, but just <laughs> trying, trying to train them. Um, you know, I coached a lot of those girls and little dribblers, and I've been, mm. uh, I guess, uh, influential in their lives the whole time. So just the 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 fruition of I told them that they, this was a possibility and to see it come to pass, and I coached them to – get out of Fairfield, go make a name for yourself. I mean, just took the experiences that I had and and tried to give them the mental part of the game. Everybody is physically talented. A lot of people are just not mentally able to sustain their, their uh, abilities. So just trying to get them mentally prepared for to do and to be able to make adjustments and, and just play the game for what it is and, and just enjoy it. <clears throat> it was just um, some of the things that I was able to to share with them and then to see them take that advice and then use it. And then all of a sudden now they've been to three state mm-hmm. uh, championship finals and won two of them. It's like, wow. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's really, really awesome. So it's all coaching is what you're saying. 
<laughs> it's all dad. No, I'm not all saying dad. it's all coaching. I'm saying <laughs> some of it is preparation. Just, okay. you know, when I was coming through, I'm not going to say that um, I don't remember having those conversations. Right. Of, like I said, it was a family thing. We just got together and we played the game just to play it. We was I don't remember really going out saying we're going to win state. We're trying to go win. We were just, look, we're not going to let Groves back or Mahaya. <laughs> you know, we were always just local stuff because we didn't want to hear it from the locals or from, because we got to see them in basketball. We got to see them in track. So it was just a, a, a rivalry or a competitive thing just from the people that you saw. It wasn't, um, or that you interacted with all the time. It wasn't like, hey, let's, Let's do this so we can go go to state and win state. You know, we wasn't really. I don't remember having. Not to say that we didn't do it. I just don't remember having those conversations, or nobody really putting that on mind. It was always, hey, we got to win district. You know, we got we got to be better than the surrounding cities. You know, that that was like the the extent of what I thought the conversations were. He's Tony Brackens, former Fairfield, Texas Longhorns, and Jacksonville Jaguars defensive, and he will be inducted in the 2022 uh, Hall of Fame class in the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame uh, this Saturday live on TexanLive.com. Tony, really appreciate your time. Congratulations again uh, on the honor, and we are looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Okay, laws will. Appreciate it. Thank you. There he goes, Tony Brackens, uh, going to, into the Hall of Fame. On Saturday, uh, we appreciate his time uh, there. Uh, the real down to earth, real, real small town, humble guys. You can tell, despite being, uh, let me just check my notes here. Uh, the career leader in sacks for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> but other than that, he hasn't really accomplished all that much. Uh, but uh, certainly great to talk with him. He will be one of the inductees going into the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame on Saturday, uh, which you can watch live on Texan Live for free. Uh, the pregame show with myself, Ishmael Johnson, and Mallory Hartley kicks off at 6 o'clock, leading up to us handing the baton over to the Hall of Famer himself, Craig Way, who will be your master of ceremonies. It's the 2022 Texas High School Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony presented by Texas Farm Bureau Insurance live on TexanLive.com. You can watch it for free, stream with your friends, have a watch party. It'll be yeah. Great. We are Texas Football today. We're here every weekday at noon on TexasFootball.com, talking football in the Lone Star State. You can follow us on Twitter at DCTF, like us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Dave Campbells, and of course, see us at TexasFootball.com, TexasFootball.com slash subscribe to become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider. If you want the 2022 Summer Edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football, the reason that I have bags under my eyes, mm-hmm. look at that, see that? Uh... Yep. Uh, if you want to get that mailed to you before it hits newsstands, go to texasfootball.com slash subscribe. Makes a great Mother's Day gift, which, by the way, this is our last show of the week. Yes. So uh, give me the single. Can I have a single cam? Mm-hmm. Tell me when I'm on the single You're cam. You're on. Oh, am I on the, on the single cam? Mm. Okay. Sunday is Mother's Day. Do not forget. Don't screw it up. <laughs> That's just been a pro- public service announcement. It's the official stance, Dave Campbell's <laughs> Texas football. Like I, I imagine, like I like to think that Dave is is up there in heaven, looking down on us, and being like, "You tell him, Tupper, yeah. don't <laughs> screw it up." <laughs> Sunday's Mother's Day. If this is the most important thing we say all year, that's okay. Don't <laughs> listen to anything else we say except these words. Sunday is it's Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Don't screw it up. <laughs> Get our subscription at Dave Campbell's Texas Football. <laughs> Texasfootball.com. So subscribe. Pickle. Did you know that 35% of college athletes uh, quit their sport or transfer schools by the end of their sophomore year? That's because most high school athletes only consider athletics when picking a college. They skip over other important factors like college major, location, scholarships, and long-term goals. With so much to consider, how do you make sure you're choosing the right school? That's where Athletes to Athletes comes in. Athletes to Athletes is a college counseling program built specifically for student-athletes and their families. They provide a holistic approach to help you find the college program that best fits all your needs both on and off the field. Go to athletes to athletes.com slash DC today to schedule your free info session and see how they can help you find the best college program for you. That's athletes to athletes.com slash DC. Okie dokie pickle. It's time for helpful Honda mailbag Friday. No Thursday. The fact that it's happening on a Thursday <laughs> does not change the fact that it's helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. 
The North Texas Honda Dealers want to help you score some great deals on award-winning Honda. Stop by your helpful Honda dealer today or visit ntxhondadealers.com to learn more. Just like tomorrow might be Math Tuesday. You never know. Math Tuesday. You never know. <laughs> so if you got questions about high school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel, all of the things that we are qualified to answer. So, mm. romance. Eh, I guess, yeah. Texas, uh, get, them in on, get your comments in on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, Twitter, all of the places that you're watching this show. Presently, uh, we got a hard out in about seven minutes, so we can answer up until then. Pickle, has anybody asked any questions? Yesterday was Star Wars Day. Who is considered the empire in Texas high school football? Mm. I think, well, okay. So this is a tough question because <laughs> there is an inherent... You have to view it in a couple of ways. Yeah, there... Because... Mm -hmm. because one would say, what is the dominant force yeah. in Texas high school football right now? I think there's a few different options. Mm -hmm. Westlake, of course, has won three state championships in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, Galena Park North Shore has won three, three titles in the last in four, four years. Yeah. yeah, three in the last four, right? Um, Katie. Katie is, of course, a perennial power. Uh, Carthage. Shiner. Yeah. Uh, Shiner could be, you know, if, if they don't spit the bit, so to speak against Refurio back in 2019, mm -hmm. they could be going for like a four-peat. Um, you know, probably would be. So a lot... There, there was, but but here's the problem with that question. Mm -hmm. You have to take it in context. With his, which is Star Wars. Because the Empire... Is not... Is evil. Yeah. <laughs> the Empire is evil. So if you want to know who the Empire is... Mm -hmm. You want to know who the Empire is? Who? Oh, watch this. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. Modern day. That's fair. There you go. Modern day is the empire. Yep. That's who they are. Because yeah. they are all powerful. Mm -hmm. They are they have they have built a Death Star. They're in a faraway land. They're in a faraway <laughs> land. Uh but they are a killing machine. Yep. And also not big fans. And, yeah. So yeah. If you put it in the context. That's the answer. It's not who you think it is. That's the answer. The answer <laughs> is modern day. They're the empire. Uh, so there you go. That's how about that for a diplomatic answer on a That's Texas good. high school football show? How about that? We, yeah. you guys are trying to capital get me, J journalist. Y'all are trying to get me in trouble. I can't get got. I, <laughs> I'm the only one who can get me. Okay, <laughs> I'm the only one. I'm the only one who can ruin my own career. Amazing. Yeah. All right. What's next? Um, two different questions about state barbecue. Mm, so yes. one, Duchess at the state barbecue event after the judging, does the general public have access? To Ooh. be available to eat some of what is cooked. Yeah, so what's the leftover situation? I will say in Lano, it was a lot more open because they hadn't made the rule that parents slash coaches had to be separated from the tent. Like we said, this year there was no one other than media allowed around the food and the competitors. Mm -hmm. um, so this year it would be nearly impossible but if they go back to allowing them underneath all the tent and stuff, that's pretty good. But basically what happens is is once your food is turned in, which is like your best – somewhere between like seven and nine cuts of meat, mm -hmm. then the rest of it, they're free to give it to whoever they want. Like you still have a whole remaining portion of brisket or a rack of ribs or anything like that. So at that point – yeah, if you stick around until after they've turned their stuff in, you're good to go. You can mm -hmm. probably walk up and ask if you can have some stuff. Um, the next one was, do you think state barbecue championships should be moved to December and held at AT&T Stadium alongside the state championship games? One, moving it to AT&T Stadium would not be smart at any point of the year because – so many of the teams that are competing in that are either from far west yeah. Texas, up in the Panhandle, or down in the RGV. Down south, yeah. Down south. <clears throat> so that's why they keep hosting it in an Austin, central Texas area, because it's easiest for everyone to meet there. If you push it all the way up here, I mean, that's six-hour plane rides at that were, point. So, so I think there's an argument to mm -hmm. be made that if you were to centralize all of the Texas high school football teams mm – -hmm. AT&T Stadium, just because of the population densities, AT&T Stadium might, in fact, be yes, the, the best option. And yes. I, I think it's the best option for a lot of different reasons. Yes. But I think that, that it's the best option for that reason. 
If you were to centralize where all the Texas high school barbecue teams are, it, that's not centralized. That's not centralized. It would be in Central Texas. Somewhere, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, and the other thing yeah. is, I desperately do not want them to butt it up against the no. state championship. No, it needs to have its and own that thing. is solely for my own benefit. One, and yes, for the kids too. Uh, most of those are one eight. Like 1A to 3A schools. Was it McMullen County one? Mm Mm-hmm. No, they don't play football, but still. Yeah, the ones, like, most all, and you know this from when you walked around last year, you go up and people see Dave Campbell's and they go, hey, we're the offensive line, you know, like, we're so-and-so's offensive line, and they're also on the barbecue team. So a lot of those teams probably wouldn't be able to compete if they moved it during football season because, I mean, shoot, at that point, 75% of them are probably the football players. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's the other thing is – uh, like you talk with these, you talk with some of these these teams, mm-hmm. and like, yeah, I'm the, like, who was it? it? Was someone last year? It was like the entire offensive line? Yeah, it was the blessed offer or the baked offer, something. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, it was some team, and it was it was not like a small town. Mm-hmm. I want to say it was like a four A or five A town, mm-hmm. but like they, it was like their whole. It was like their barbecue team is the their offensive, offensive line. line. <laughs> That's it. So it's like. You don't want to make them choose. No, the and with all those 1A teams and stuff, too. There was even, when we were standing there at one point, a uh, guy right in the middle of cutting his brisket had looked to see who was kind of like over his shoulder because we were the only people kind of allowed in that area. Mm-hmm. And he goes, hey, where's Matt Stepp? And it was oh, one of the competitors. It. So he obviously knew, and he was like, yeah, we got the football team out here today. So, yeah, that just wouldn't be able to work. That's, Solid question, yeah. but – I'd rather yeah, I, them, and for personal reasons, yeah, I know we wouldn't be able to enjoy it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Think about who really loses here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, Could you, <laughs> what do you you trying to take food out of my mouth? Like yeah. literally, <laughs> I don't mean that as some sort of like you know turn of phrase. I mean that you're trying to take bris- brisket out of my mouth. I yep. don't appreciate that. Mm-mm. Okay, do we have any more? Uh, one more. Okay, football question. First oh. time head coach who you think will have the biz- biggest impact this fall? Ooh. Biggest impact. So, so, here's, mean, so here's the thing. Um, impact as Matt in Stepanai, most Matt's, chance to win the state championship or impact as in turning around a program? So <laughs> Matt Stepp and I talked about this on uh, Tep and Stepp about a month ago. We talked about a first-year head coach with the best chance of winning a state championship. The answer might be a, team, a guy like uh, Tony Salazar, right? Yep. Tony Salazar at Westlake. Or Geyer's but, new coach. Or Geyer, yeah, yeah, Reed Heim there, right? But here's the thing. If you're talking about, and okay, I want to phrase this correctly. Of course, Coach Salazar is going to have a big impact on the team. Yes. But there's no, like, I talked with him, I'll just spoil it. I talked with him for the 6A preview yesterday. Mm-hmm. Okay. He is very much of the opinion that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. He is trying, he's going to find some ways to, to put his own stamp on the program, mm-hmm. but that that program is in great shape and his job is to keep the train going. Yeah. You're you know? not, he's not building from the ground right. up. So if you're talking about a guy who is going into a job that I think could have an immediate impact, I look at a guy like Steve Huff at Decatur. Yep. That's a good one. I think Steve Huff at Decatur could walk in and make a, and do uh, but this is first things. time head coach. Oh, first time, time head, head coach. coach. Ooh, now that's interesting. Yeah. Reed Heim's interesting. Yeah. Um, but although, again, not a whole lot of places to go. Um, that's an excellent question. Um, let me look over the coaching changes, see if there's one that, that jumps to mind. Because a lot of these guys, like, we know as, like, oh, they, they, they've been. Yeah, like Steph just before. put in the comments, Mark Soto at Judson. That's great, yeah. but he's been a head coach. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, I'm very, I'm very bullish on what um, – I'm very bullish on what Joe Del Carey can do at Brazoswood, moving mm-hmm. from Hondo, but like he's a guy who obviously or has... Cluley moving over to right. Mount Pleasant. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, I'll throw one out there. It's a bit off the board. Okay. Mike Pry is the new head coach at El Paso Coronado. Hmm. He's taking over for the legend Bob Anderson. Bob Anderson uh, was there. Uh, he was ten seasons there at, at Coronado. I think that. Having a younger guy, having an alum like Pry come in and take over that job, I think could do things. He was the co-office coordinator at El Paso Pebble Hills. I think he's coming home. I think he can make an impact there mm-hmm. in, in early growing. I'll give you another one, okay? Another 6A one. Aaron Lineweaver is the new head coach at Euless Trinity. Now, again, program that's not in shambles. No. Program that doesn't need fixing, mm-hmm. so to speak. But... If you're talking about a guy who understands the program, 
guy who has connections within the, the community to help build, get the things done that you need to get done. And who is not, it's not going to be an issue for everybody to buy into what he's selling. Mm -hmm. Not only because he's a great coach in his own right. He's been an assistant coach there at, uh, at, at South Lake Carroll for the past couple of years, but also because of the last name mm -hmm. that's going to help. So those uh, would be two guys that I, that I immediately. Aaron you know. Arbuckle put it in the comments before I could bring it up, but uh, Cal Allen. Yeah. Another, if it's not broke, True. don't fix it. Yeah. But just, I mean, a, a change from the past 40 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, with Steve Campbell taking over. But, like, again, he's a guy who understands the program so well. He's never been a head mm -hmm. coach. Uh, been the defensive coordinator there for years and years yeah. and years, like decades. <laughs> um, but also, there's just not a whole lot of places to go. Like, you know, he's taken over for a, a legend there, obviously, mm -hmm. like one of the legends. Um, yeah, Steve Campbell's not a bad choice. Steve Campbell, but, again, it's just, like, how much of a – of uh, how much higher can you mm -hmm. go? Oh, we have one more really good question that regards around barbecue. Two seconds. Go. What's your favorite barbecue entree and side dish? Go on the spot. Okay. Let me do side dish first. Okay. I love potato salad. Me too. That's mine. Love 110%. Potato salad. Love potato salad. I love potato salad. You're making me choose an entree. I'm going to go ribs. Ribs and potato <sighs> salad are my... I think that ribs... You're not is, going quickly. This is... I know I'm not. <laughs> this is a weird... This is a weird thing okay i think ribs are more consistent yeah i think brisket can vary so so widely like okay good brisket bad mm -hmm. brisket and like the, the the range is really big high ceiling low floor uh, exactly i think ribs are a little bit more contained and so i'm gonna go with ribs yeah i'm gonna go ribs and, and potato then, salad and okay potato salad. That, Although that's if you're a, but here's the thing that's my if exact you're asking answer. me like what when it's at its best, what's the best? It's brisket. Okay. When it's like elite, elite, like um, I love the brisket at Heim Barbecue. Yes. That's like elite, elite. I'll take that over like, mm -hmm. I'll take that over breathing. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like that is, but I would say that if you're asking me what plate do you want, I'm going to a place I've never been. Give me mm -hmm. potato salad and ribs. I'm not going to lie to also the physical getting to pick up a rib uh, and eat it makes the experience for yeah, me like you know, if you're not getting barbecue on your shirt then you haven't done like barbecue right mm -hmm. so that's my thing okay that's it's gonna it. do for us remember no show on thursday but let's throw no, this out tomorrow there. today is thursday no show tomorrow no show on thursday friday <laughs> today's today's mailback friday god uh tomorrow's math tuesday no show tomorrow no show tomorrow because <laughs> We're setting up in Waco for the Texas High yes. School Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony live on TexanLive.com. It's the 2022 Texas High School Football Hall of Fame induction ceremony. You can watch live for free on TexanLive.com, presented oh, by our free. friends at Texan Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. It'll be myself, Ishmael Johnson, and Mallory Hartley on the pregame show before we hand it all off to the Hall of Famer himself, Craig Way, to induct uh, legends, icons, and luminaries of the Texas High School Football world into the uh, 2022 class of the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame. Saturday that at 6. Saturday. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for spending a little bit of your day with us. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's. And of course, see us at texasfootball.com. Thanks again to Tony Brackens for being our guest. For Ashley Pickle, I'm Greg Tepper. Vince Young, please come get your Player of the Year trophy. We will see you Monday on Texas Football Today. <laughs>